preparing on his chair. And we'll give it a few more minutes for more people to, to join us. So stay with us. Hello, Reed. Masoncha. Kotov. Okay. Echanita Hayom. No, no, it's the sad hair shell. Can I hear that? Lamalo Gam Hayom, the Beseda, no? Ham. Can ham. Ham about Tov, Tov, they call Salat. Blida forever. Okay, I'm going back to meet myself and behave like a good student. Hey Frank, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, next one, thanks. Hello. Hello Maria. Shalom Ziad. Mashmuchem. I call Mr. Eder. Yofi.
Elad, what do you say? Shall we start? Shall we start? Can we start? Okay, let's start. Maybe just before we start, do you want to ask me any permission to start share screen? Shall we start with... Depending on what I see, there is permission. Let's see רגע,יש,יש,אוקיי,יופי,אוקיי,טוב,אז,ערב טוב לכולם,שלום,ברוכים וברוכות הבאים,לערב מיוחד שלנו,לכבוד,in-honor,אוקיי, of the LGBTQ month taking place all around. Um, so today, one of our teachers, Elad, who is both a teacher and a translator, who is now, I think, in, in Greece, aren't you? Yes, that's correct. See, what a, what a magic this uh, whole online teaching is. Um, so uh, Elad is going to... Um, to speak with us about um, LGBT slang or gay slang in Israel, uh, in Hebrew, which is a very interesting topic for me as well. So we're going to, uh, uh, to do it with uh, questions. So I have heard some questions uh, for a lot to explain to us many aspects of it. Um, and a lot, if, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just start with the first question. Okay, so I'm, Yaron, by the way, nice to meet you all. I'm the manager and the founder of the Ulpan. Uh, I live in Tel Aviv for 15 years, and as a person who lives in Tel Aviv for 15 years, most people I know are actually gay. <laughs> More people uh, than, uh, than not gay people. Um, and uh, during this month, I went to celebrate with my friends, and I discovered that I don't understand half of what they're saying sometimes. Um, so uh, it happens to me once I thought that I'm really fluent in, uh, in Israeli gay slang and I discovered that uh, I'm not and I wondered if this is something that is common. Um, well, um, I will answer this question. First of all, hi everybody. Hello. Um, I will answer this question uh, with a short video. Um, this, has, this is, uh, okay, let's watch it first and uh, then discuss, hold on. Okay, no, I will give a short um, introduction. This is a short video, a stop motion video created by a, an art major student. Um, it is based on a, an audio file that was circulating circa, I don't know, early 90s when we were still, um, iMesh and Napster, I, I guess. And then um, it's basically recorded uh, to what we call Ochchot, which is a feminine, a feminine gaze, uh, speaking in Ochchit, which is a feminine gay-ish. Um, as Anglit, Ivrit, Aravit, we also have the Ochchit. Uh, so let's uh, take a listen. Hi, Ochtsch. 
Um, so, uh, Yaron, you were asking if it's common that people don't understand. This is super hyper specific. Most gays would also not understand. Uh, this is kind of a jargon that um, was on the rise during the 80s and the 90s. And it has a lot of words that are basically substituting other words. For example, I'm gonna go uh, uh, online class here for a second. We have the word bud, which is basically goof, the body. We have the word lird, which is a hot man. We have the word dkek, which is a variation of the word duck. Thin. Um, other words were club, which I guess you can understand what that means uh, in Hebrew, moadon. Um, Markita, uh, which is a name for a, an effeminate gay man, um, or just in general, yes. Um, let's go for femme man. Uh, Sompt, uh, sympathique. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, many of these words are variations of words in Hebrew or words taken from many other languages. Uh, and these were used uh, within the gay community in this kind of a secret spoken language that would only be understood among um, these specific uh, groups of people. Um, yeah, more or less, uh, it was, a person uh, listening to this conversation would probably not understand anything. And this would allow them to talk about very intimate things about gay sex, things that were um, either stigmatized or properly illegal. It would have enabled them to ask each other questions without anybody um, raising any suspicion. Uh, for example, we have the very nondescript question, Ba'inyan, Inyan is matter or subject but Inyan, is he into is he within the subject is he into what we think it is i can ask somebody who by Inyan? anybody out of the community would have no idea what we do we know that i'm basically asking is he one of us or is she one of us so this is where it comes from originally Okay, so if it's okay, let me ask you this. You're talking about some sort of a secretive language used by, I'm assuming, sort of an underground community, but it doesn't seem that the, that the LGBTQ community in Tel Aviv is, is very much in the closet anymore. So I'm wondering when did this transition happen? So when, until when was it a real secretive language and when did it start to actually be an out in the open community when it happens sometimes. Um, okay, so like many places now, way before they were spoken of, and um, I think, okay, around the mid 70s, the first uh, LGBTQ uh, in Hebrew, Lahatab. I wanna write that down for a second. Um, okay. Lahatab, uh, that's an acronym for Lesbio, Homoim, Transsexualim, Bisexualim. Later we also see Lahatabak, which adds Asexualim, Vequirim. Um, so in the mid 70s, um, this uh, organization uh, is uh, established and they hold a small uh, demonstration in 79. I want to show you a short video of that because it also shows an interesting um, attempt to establish a language. Um, hold on. All right, do we see this? Yes. So this is the first demonstration in what now is Kikar Rabin, Rabin Square, back then Kikar Malchei Israel, the Kings of Israel Square. Um, and this is the wording that they were using. 
אנחנו פה כי אנחנו הם נעמים ונעמות נעמים ונעמות אנחנו פה בישראל אוקיי, the words that you were using was נעימים ונעמות. נעימים ונעמות was the first attempt at um, uh, translating gay into Hebrew. Uh, נעים, uh, pleasant or palatable I guess, I don't know. Uh, yeah, נעים, נעימים ונעמות was the attempt to create the word gay. That did not really catch. Um, but eventually we did um, stuff, we did uh, get stuff, not get stuff, we stuck to ge'e and ge'a. It also has um, similarities, the phonetic similarities to the word gay, but also the meaning of ge'e and ge'a is, it's an adjective to be proud. Um, and so we both maintain a phonetic resemblance to the word gay and ge'a, ge'im, ge'ot. Uh, and from that also Gaava, um, which is pride, uh, which is what we're currently ce celebrating. Uh, and also Kehila, Hagea, which is what it is commonly referred to. So these were the first uh, steps uh, back in the 70s. Um, an actual advance was not made until mid 90s. In 93, there was a short, dem a small demonstration in Shenkin Street in the garden, in Ginat Shenkin, where people just came out of a wooden closet installation. Um, the police came to get people out of the garden and they were wearing uh, rubber gloves because they were afraid of catching HIV AIDS. Uh, that infuriated people and kind of created the first Israeli stone wall. Uh, it wasn't as violent or as um, subversive as the original stone wall was, but it was our local version of it some decades later. Um, another interesting thing that happened in the same uh, demonstration was that um, one of these participants who came out of this wooden closet installation was a soldier called... Uh, Yossi um, McKenna, he got uh, his picture taken by a journalist and was subsequently, he was um, uh, a soldier and he was subsequently uh, um, uh, judged by a panel, a uh, military jury, uh, and he was 28 days in prison and immediately after was kicked out of the army for his participation in this uh, event. Um, many years later, this Yossi uh, became a very strong uh, proponent of gays, as he writes, he fights also for Bedouin, Palestinian rights, sort of intersectionality going on, obviously. Um, his name is known now, now known as Yosefa, more, more, more than anything. Uh, Yossi is Yosef, Yosefa would be the feminine version, version of it, uh, which is um, something that happens a lot, like within this jargon, I would be Elada or Eladit, Yaron would be Yarona, I guess. Um, Yaron, is my internet okay? I'm getting. Do you hear me well? Yes, I think you're. I mean, I'm not sure that your internet connection is that good. I don't know. I, I sometimes I see you like flickering. I'm not sure. I see that. Okay. Good green. You give me a sign if that happens. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so if you already started speaking about some wordings and etymologies, so I mean, I barely know now, at least I feel I barely know like gay slang. I mean, I know like wedge, which is face, and everyone knows it now. And what else? Loud, which is like a hot guy, and John, which is like penis. And I was wondering if you can explain a little more about like etymologies, like about some more interesting words and where did they come from actually? Um, okay, so I'm stepping into, again, there's a lot of intersectionality here, uh, but a lot of this slang comes, originally came from the transsexuals and the feminine gay community. Many of the more outspoken, if we're looking at 
uh, the cliches of uh, very cold and cold back Ashkenazis and open and warm and outspoken Mizrahi, then a lot of this land comes from a more Mizrahi section of the gay community. And so a lot of it is influenced by the language that these people were speaking at home. So a lot of it is influenced by Iraqi Arabic, by uh, French Arabic, the Moroccan Arabic and French jargon. Um, so we have, okay, so you mentioned the word, let's talk about some words. You mentioned the word jonj, which is actually, which is a uh, name for a penis, which is actually one of the few completely original words that have no proper etymology known, and as, as far as I know. But then we have from Arabic, we have och or ochcha, which comes, or even the word yachti, all coming from the word achoti, my sister, in various Arabic uh, dialects, either Moroccan, Ar uh, Iraqi, or sometimes even local, uh, Palestinian. Uh, we have the word wedge, which comes from, I'm sorry if my pronunciation is wrong, there's also different dialects, but wajah uh, is face in Arabic, wajah or waji, depends on where you're coming from. Uh, so that's a face. Um, then we also have um, words that became pejorative in, uh, towards uh, um, Arabic Jews, people from uh, Arabic countries like Frecha or Chafla, which are basically Arabic names that have become identified with, uh, they grew to have some negative connotation, but then were reclaimed. So these are very often used um, when describing uh, actions. So for example, we have Frecha basically comes from happiness, um, from the word, uh, and then we have the word Fora, which means just to be happy, to, mean, to make merry. So this is from uh, Farhan, from to be happy in Arabic. Um, so this is Arabic. Then we have influence from Spanish or Ladino. Uh, we have words like Merkita, which is a bit like Marika, um, which is uh, also in common in today in Spain used for a gay guy, um, which is basically um, ladybug, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or a nickname for little Maria somehow, which is also ladybug, she's called after Maria the ladybug. So Merkita is a femme guy. There's a, a lot of words for a femme gay guy. Um, we have the word vieja, uh, very commonly used. Vieja comes from viejo, vieja in Spanish, or vieja Latino, which is an, old, an older gay guy, uh, which by the way, I don't know the etymology of that, but the antonym for that would be kukitsa, which is a super young, super fresh, a femme guy, um, usually way over the top, way loud. Um, again, a femme young guy. Um, and we also have the word puto, comes from the male version of puta, um, which is a whore or um, literally, but it is used actually in a very, uh, it's a fun way to refer to either one's penis or just a guy. Um, so that's uh, very often used, the uh, male version of uh, Uta. That's a uh, Ladino. Um, again, we have Jews from all over, and it's not just uh, Mizrahi and Sephardic people who contributed. We also have some contributions from German. Uh, for example, we have the verb lehastrich. Um, the word strich in German is a line, and it, okay, the folk etymology at least, refers to a line that beyond which uh, it was allowed to practice uh, prostitution. Um, again, because many of these words come from the trans community, many of which were in prostitution and also today, uh, marginalized as they are, um, so lehastrich would mean either go cruising or just looking for someone to hook up with. Um, um, so that's cruising or hooking up. 
Uh, and another one, pardon my French. Um, okay, we are talking about something that is highly sexual. So every now and then we will have a bit of that. We have the word speck, um, which in German is just bacon or parts of uh, pork. And in gay jargon is uh, another word for a penis. Uh, then we have uh, influences from English. How can you not? Uh, we have words like uh, Lord, which we know. Uh, but then, then this gave rise to words like Lird and Loud, which is just a hot guy. Very used until this day. Lord, Lirding, you might know the song by Omer Adam. Tel Aviv, Ya Habibi, Tel Aviv. Tistakel, Kama, Lirding, Misaviv. Look how many hot guys we have around us. Um, and then the opposite of a Lird, somebody who is completely basic would be usual or usually if we're looking for the feminine version of it usual not interesting basic so that comes from english as well um, and then a lot of influences from french mostly moroccan french and here we don't really use okay we have obviously the very very famous coccinelle coccinelle in french is again the ladybug uh, back in, if I'm not mistaken, the 70s, there was a very world, fam very world famous uh, trans woman who was performing all over the world. Her stage name was Coxinelle. She also came in Israel. She had a very big impact. And the word Coxinelle uh, became a pejorative term for gay guys. And that has been uh, reclaimed in many in recent years. And many would fondly refer to themselves as Cox or Coxinelle. Uh, so that's... Uh, a trans or, or, tra or a cross dresser. Um, and then we have uh, words like maquillage, makeup. Uh, and we take this kind of age ending and we apply it to many Hebrew words. Uh, we could talk about shoes and say naalaj. Naal, aj would be my shoes, anala in Shelly. Um, we could talk about homoyage which is the gay community as a whole. We can talk about nichnasaj, my pants, nichnasayim. We basically can take most of anything and just add aj in the end. And this gives it a bit of a sort of international, sort of gay vibe. Um, so there's a lot of everything going on. Um, yeah, so this is the etymology of most of, uh, of the uh, gay jargon. Would you say, I mean, when I look at all of these age endings that I actually use myself quite a lot, I never really thought of them as being very gayish. It's just like, it's very useful <laughs> in some sense, just to change the ending. Um, but would you say that there are actually also like grammatical act aspects to the gay dialect or is it only vocabulary and, and like jargon? Um, okay, so yeah, as you said, Many of these things have seeped and even dominated uh, general slang. Uh, gays as uh, our trendsetters, we are. And so um, many times uh, something that starts, some mode or fashion that starts within the community, not always, but it also leaks out um, to the general public. So this age thing that you said you use, many people use. And like that, for example, nowadays, very common for people to say things like hayush and bayush, this kind of cutesy talk. And this originated from the gay community, this hayush and bayush, this tendency to add these uh, suffixes is very originally gay. So we had hayush and bayush, we had, um, so this is the ush ending. And from here, we also have Instus and Grindus, which is the Grinder, uh, one of the gay um, um, apps, I guess. Um, how do you call it? Take a wheel. Um, dating apps. And then we have other variations like Uj, the suffix Uj, we can say Makoruj, Manishmuj, instead of Makore, Manishma, or things. Makoruj, Manishmuj. So this is something that happens a lot. Um, other uh, like grammatical changes. Um, again, Arabic has a very strong effect here. So a lot of those of you who know a little bit about Binyanim and Zarot, you know that Hebrew has these um, 
patterns that you can follow. And it doesn't only apply to verbs, it also applies to many nouns. And so we have verb uh, patterns imported from Arabic. For example, um, in Arabic, we have maf'ul, which is like um, pa'ul, I guess. And then we use that, we apply that to Hebrew roots. For example, we have madhuz or madhum, which is basically amazing, madhim. But then we just use the same root and we apply Arabic influenced roots into it. Uh, similarly, we have, in Arabic, we have a plural form that's like u'u, like huruf, which is letters, for example. Like, um, so we take that and we apply that to Hebrew words. So we can say shuzur to refer to shoes. Again, we take the word shoes and we put it in an Arabic pattern to create shuzur. Um, ah, like madhuz, madhum, we have the opposite of that. Mahrud. Good, of course. Mahrud. Madhum, madhuz, madhum, amazing. Mahrud, horrible. Mahrud. And very, very often also mahruda when we refer to someone who's dressed horribly. Zot. Mahruda. Ah, speaking of Zot, there's a lot of. Okay, we're going to get that in a second. So we have uh, Shuzur, which is shoes. We have Murmu, which comes from the word Mirmu, which is bitterness in Hebrew. But we just apply this Murmur, and it's kind of fun. Uh, Utruf, which is another Israeli gay dating app, Atraf. Again, come, the word comes from Arabic. Um, truth is a uh, um, and then obviously, ah, uh, is my internet gone again? Yes, but just for a second, yes, okay. Um, okay, so we said we will look at another gay guy and say that we don't like the way they're dressed and say, Zot, Mahruda, Mahruda. So we would use a, use a lot of feminine voice when we refer to masculine, to men, for that matter. Um, so first of all, we have a lot of indicators. So not just zot or zoti, we might use dut or dit. Dut, mahruda. Dit, me'amemet. Okay? Instead of zot or her, that, she, we would have all these kind of identifiers. Um, and like I said before, uh, Yaron would be Yarona, I could be El Adit. Uh, the bouncer in the club, which is most likely a man, would be Ha Bouncerit, he lo not nalili kanes chatufa. Okay, we would always refer to men, either they're feminine or not, in a feminine form. Um, for example, many of these words were recorded in what is now known as Milon. Evan Shoshana. Milon Evan Shoshan is the most famous and uh, respected um, um, dictionaries in Hebrew. And Milon Evan Shoshana, you just take Shoshan, you turn it into a feminine form, and there you have it. Now it's gay. Uh, so a lot of feminine uh, usage to regular items also as well. Like I could talk about the table, Hashulchan. We all know that this is a masculine item, uh, object, but I could say and that would be completely acceptable. Whoa. Okay, so that's, that's actually interesting because it, it actually changes the language. Like, I mean, the, the whole question about masculine and feminine in Hebrew kind of gets deprecated in, the, in this dialect. Uh, yes, I think, I don't know if it was intended, but I think it's a part of it. I think what these people were trying to do is play with the rules of gender, is play with the rules of society. And they were doing it also through their language. I don't think it was a, um, an active way. Okay, in some ways, I think it was a response to societies uh, identifying them as a feminine or deprecating them for, that, for it. Uh, but I think it's mostly just uh, playing with the language as you play with gender constructs, as you play with society, as you try to just make fun of yourself, of everything. And I guess uh, in many ways, um, enjoy, enjoy life, I guess. It's interesting. I mean, 
I, I always had the feeling that, I mean, that Hebrew is a little more flexible than other languages, at least when it comes to, uh, to phonetics. So for instance, we, we tend no, not even to notice when people change uh, vowels in Hebrew or use different vowels. I mean, the, the, meaning, the meaning stays and it's very easy for, for people to understand each other. Uh, it's not a phen phenomenon that you see, for instance, in English a lot. I mean, it's, it's not a very like plastic language in a sense. Uh, but, but it does sound like, the, like this gay dialect take, takes it one step further in a sense. I mean, really playing with it. I mean, especially I'm hearing it when you, when you just described like the, the Arabic Binyanim who entered Hebrew through this slang, which is interesting. I mean, I hear that so, so often and, and then using it as if it's, it's now like a Hebrew Binyan or like Mahrud is something that I say all the time without even thinking that I'm just using a Binyan from a different language that just entered Hebrew. Which is fabulous. I mean, okay, you need to remember that the language is not that different. It's still a custom language. So, but we also see this in, in Western language. Like we talk about le success to send the fax for the SMS to send an SMS. We do have this kind of like a specific um, one. I, I couldn't hear you for a sec there. So uh, I'm not sure what you just said, actually. <laughs> Yeah, there was a problem with the internet, I guess. Ah, no, no, I, I, I interrupt, I interject, I interrupted saying that um, it's not completely unreasonable for us to import things from Arabic as it is a cousin, like a sister language or a cousin language. Um, but you, you are right, you're correct. There's this plasticity. We can take words from like le faxes or le sms from sms from facts and turn them into Hebrew words. But, sorry, but I was interjecting, you were saying something. No, no, it's fine. Um, Okay, something about like the, the most like the more modern gay slang. Some of it you just showed, but for example, myself, um, I once learned from friends uh, this phrase "morid tatina," um, which is like uh, it's like I heard people say say it about other people who are like downers, people who are just like not fun to be with, and then like "mata morid tatina." And I just adopted this as a slang and I used it a lot for people who I thought were downers until I, I, I truly understood the meaning of Morita Tina, which is Tina is just like the term for crystal meth. <laughs> and Morita Tina is someone who makes this whole crystal meth experience very bad. So it's just like, oh, wow. I mean, how much of this slang is related to, to nightlife and to, to sex and to drug practices? I mean, I, I, I'm honestly quite surprised. And I'm wondering, I mean, it, it kind of seems to me like this, this uh, secretive language has become something that, I mean, it is not used to describe like a hidden community anymore. <laughs> it is more used like, uh, to describe even like extreme practices or th like other things that I mean, I I'm not really sure how. That's very correct. Sorry. Sorry, I had everything got cut. I don't know my internet. Sorry, guys. Okay, so and I, I was actually just like asking whether you think like the the gay slang has now become something that is a little less about like liberating a community and a lot more about just like having fun and drugs, <laughs> in other words. That's a very good question. Um, obviously, yes, as, okay, language also reflects reality. So as the LGBTQ or for that matter, gay, because this is uh, the most, the strongest, more prominent vo voice out of these, uh, as they have progressed, the need for the secret language as a secret language um, is not as present. And then the struggle was not so much, what wasn't so much about struggle and it was about uh, reclaiming things that was, it was just a kind of lifestyle. And there's a lot of voices criticizing the fact that gay community has become uh, just a lifestyle of drugs, parties and sex, which is not entirely untrue. And so a lot of these wordings, a lot of these slangs, especially the new ones, reflect that. So whereas in the past we had marginalized minorities bringing their own identities, whether it's Arab or Moroccan or feminine or uh, prostitution, 
now most of these words come have a very strong English effect, and most of them describe um, yes nightlife. We talk about club. We talk about Tina, Gina, all these international nicknames for drugs uh, that have become very prominent uh, within the gay community. Um, but still, um, there is a lot of effort, a lot of effort to create uh, either a fluid language, more fluid use in gender. Um, somehow to try to liberate uh, perceptions of gender. And also, even if we're talking about drugs and club scenes, the underlying effect that has to do with uh, just being happy and what we talked about for us from the Arabic. Is my internet bad again? Yeah. It's not very good, yeah. I mean, sorry, I I'm could, so sorry, guys. I could hear I, you. I, I blame the Greek. Um, so uh, what was I saying? Okay, so this underlying uh, attempt of Soros, of making, bringing this happiness, this is still what is in the basic basis of a lot of these things. So we have, like you said, Le Horid, to bring down, and Le Ha'alot, I'm going to write these two. Le Horid. Le Ha'alot. Many times we say Alali or Allah. If I'm taking a pill and it starts affecting me, Alali, I'm up. Okay. Hearing me or not? Yes, you're still Can you hear me? More or less. Can you move to a different country where there is better internet connection, maybe? <laughs> I should. I definitely should. Um, so, yeah, in the club, you could hear someone asking, Alalas? Alali? And then the, usually many times you would refer to yourself as uh, in third person, Alala. Then we also have leharim. Leharim is super important. Leharim basically means to lift or to pick something up. And we use it a lot because gay vibe would be just to bring happiness, bring joy. Leharim, elevate things, make things happy. And then we have also harama, which, okay, could be lift, like a facelift. But we also say haramot is just having fun dancing, enjoying life, living it up, even if it means using some drugs to it, and even if it's not as politically uh, charged as it used to be. Le'arim, haramot, is still a very strong uh, aspect of gay life. And I think we can focus that rather than necessarily the drugs that help us. I couldn't hear the, the ending, but, but I have a small question about like alali because, and it's a question about phonetics because when you say alali alala, while I say alali alala, it sounds like you're saying alala, like there is a prolonging of the vowel there. Is it true? I mean, is this the way you say it? alala? I mean, do you understand what I'm asking? Frozen. <laughs> Just like the movie. But in a beautiful position, actually. I hope you can still hear us. <laughs> you look amazing a lot, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> well, Guys, for the rest of you, I'll say that if you have questions that then I'm running short of questions. So I have two more questions that I really, I'm really eager to ask, but if you have more questions to, to ask a lot, so you can prepare them now and I think you'll be back in a sec, I hope.
sorry, I'll text him to see what's up. I'm writing El Adit. El Adit. Can you hey. say this? Hey. Can you say this Alali also about alcohol? No, I, I only heard it when it came to drugs, it, mostly ecstasy, um, like MDMA, Molly. I see. I, I actually I kind of think that you can that you can do it, say it about alcohol as well, like it's just that something that um, you took or you um, uh, something uh, external external that is supposed to make you happier or supposed to make you feel um, uh, drunk or happy or and. I think it can be used uh, also. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, he answered. Oh, I didn't get what, what he just texted me. Uh, so I hope she's Merima somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Is she back? Oh, I see. I think he's back. Yes. Ayush. That as a wedge, as a wedge of, uh, okay. At po kapara metuka, yofi neshama. Sorry, babe. Echaya, heram, ta haramot? Ani menasa laharim la internetit, aval zoti, lo rotza, lo rotza. Sababa. I have another question, forget about the last one. Um, so, I hear all of this slang and it kind of feels like it's very of the gay community and not really of the LGBTQ community. In the sense that, I mean, for instance, my, uh, my partner, my life partner, uh, she's a comedian and sh she does this uh, character of, uh, of this uh, uh, lesbian girl and a very typical one. And it, she has like a completely different slang. I mean, it, it sounds like a different language totally different language. So would you say that what you just described is actually like the gay slang or is it more related to, to the entire community or is there, are there differences between like the lesbian slang and gay slang? You understand the question? Yes, definitely. Uh, okay, I will start with a disclaimer saying that I am a gay man. I have acquired most of my knowledge uh, from the gay community, working with drag queens, um, working in gay bars, uh, that in Israel for most of, okay, in the past 10, 15 years, that has changed a little bit, but it was mainly gay guys who were setting the tone uh, because, uh, okay, let's face it, patriarchy and male chauvinism and homophobia even do not end within the gay community. Um, their voices are louder, they're more present, and also I am more uh, acquainted with that. A lesbian, let's talk about the other LGBT. So lesbians do have, uh, I'm sure they have more of a lingo as, uh, first of all, uh, you mentioned uh, your partner in crime, uh, Tom, and I wanna talk for a second. I wanna show her lesbian character. Uh, this is her. She is wearing the very uh, characteristic gulgul of uh, late 2000s uh, uh, lesbian life. Um, and she does use uh, this lingo, but the lingo is not as prevalent and not as uh, strong. Um, the, what I'm talking about is mostly representing uh, transsexual women and gay guys, mostly feminine, who were setting the tones. Um, lesbians do have also the tendency, as the gay guys have the tendency to speak in uh, a feminine voice, uh, we can also see lesbians mostly, okay, there's a joke, sorry for it, it's at least a little bit lesbophobic. Uh, lesbians uh, move in after the second date and then they don't leave the house again, they nest. And so one of uh, the characteristics of this nesting would be using this male voice, which is uh, like a bit of a childish, like, Mami, ani ra'ev. Mami, taseli ochel. This is, again, something that is very lesbian. And I'm telling this 
after having lived with a lesbian couple for a good couple of years. And um, it is also, also common within straight communities, uh, straight women, uh, but this is something that we can find. Um, among bisexuals, if we're going down the LGB, then we have the word bis or BC, BC, which refers to bisexual uh, in Hebrew, BC or BC. First time today, you know, I look for what, BC and BC. BC. And, and then I saw like a, an article about someone and it said, an ibisit. And I was just like, oh, interesting. First time I hear this. <laughs> yeah, so it's not bis like I'm taking a bite. It's bis, short for bisexual, bisexual. Um, okay, this community, again, was very underrepresented for many years. Uh, there was a very common term. Um, I will write it down. Du, shelo, yachshedu. Uh, du is the prefix for two. Like uh, bilingual would be du leshoni. So du would be uh, du mini, which was what they used to call bisexuals. Although now when, when you say du mini, yes, it's bisexual. Du is the bi. And then for many men, you would say du, shelo, yach, shedu. Lachshod, the verb lachshod is to suspect. So in the past, many gay guys would say, I'm not gay, I'm bi, so that nobody would suspect him as being gay. So we would say, du shelo yach shedu. This is, of course, very biphobic. Does that matter? Um, can you hear? Or am I here? Sure. I'm here. Um, and nowadays, we don't use du so much. We use bis or bc. Uh, to refer to bisexual. And then we also have a ace or AC to refer to asexual. Yet another a very small community with an already marginalized community that has suffered its own uh, prejudice. Um, so these are uh, some terms that we use nowadays. Uh, again, these communities are not, I think they are coming to, I, I don't think, Okay, maybe maybe I'm just ignorant here, but I don't think they had as strong uh, need for a community, or maybe they did not have the recognition uh, that gets had, and so they did not be a person I know not create their own jargon or their own uh, slang. Interesting. I have I have a follow up question to this one. Um, I mean. Okay, so, so we just showed some like, um, let's call it like nicknames for like sexual affiliations. And I'm, I'm sure, and, and, and I'm, I mean, we're all familiar with a lot of the like derogatory words referring to gay people. And I'm wondering if you can say something about this. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if, if you can see in Hebrew that, I mean, just in English, the, the, there used to be some process that like derogatory words Kind of were reclaimed by the community and became standard words like uh, like queer, right? Uh, and I wonder if it also happened in Hebrew in some sense. Um, okay, so first of all, the word homo, or as it is mostly said in Israel, homo with an aleph, um, would probably be derogatory. But nowadays, homo in the lesbian, most people would refer to them to themselves as homo, although. The, I don't like it personally, but the common used uh, term today is gay for uh, gay men and lesbian for lesbian women. Um, there used to be, okay, you not used to be. First of all, the word coccinelle, as I said, um, for a transsexual person, um, coccinelle would be uh, Cox. Coxinelle would be a good person that we use the word Cox, uh, kind of reclaim. I can say Cox and feel very confident about it. Um, then we have um, a lot of very, okay, these are not things that were reclaimed, but I think they are worth looking at just because they're funny to look at. For example, um, we have um, uh, Mitromem, okay, Mitromem. Uh, would be a faggot, I guess. And again, it comes from the same verb, the same leharim, to lift it up. So in that sense, I guess it is reclaimed. 
אוקיי, אני מתרומם, אין בעיה, אני מתרוממת ואני מרימה ואני עושה שמח, הכל בסדר. Um, so that, that is one way, we, we would call it a faggot, yes, uh, so it's still derogatory, not exactly we claim. Um, we still have words like uh, uh, for example, or um, these are uh, uh, very harsh uh, terms, I'm sorry in advance, disclaimers, um, we have, uh, but I also find some that they are a little bit funny, we have um, Uh, uh, we can understand what it means, I suppose. Noshech uh, kariot. Noshech is to bite, and karit is a pillow, so that's a pillow biter. Um, we have bochesh uh, bashoko. Livchosh. Okay, livchosh uh, is uh, to stir, so I guess. Uh, Chocolate stirrer, I guess. Sorry in advance. Um, so these are not reclaimed, but they have their own humor. For uh, lesbians, yes, we can also talk about Naheget um, Masai, which is a truck driver. Uh, again, derogatory, obviously. Um, sometimes referred to Mikarel or a fridge. Uh, these are both aspects of the uh, butch, uh, uh, butch uh, lesbians as opposed to femme lesbians. If we're talking about uh, lesbian uh, stand, then we talk a lot about butch and, butch and femmes. Um, what other derogatory terms? Um, I think this is uh, what is usually referred to when we talk about uh, derogatory terms, yes. Um, More or less, I suppose, yeah. Cool, interesting. So, Elad, I mean, this was my last question. I have, I have two requests. First, um, if you can maybe share this document with us and we'll send it here in the chat for people who are doing support. And second, if uh, anyone here has questions, then let's open it for a short Q&A. Um, and I mean, if you have anything to, to ask, then you're more than welcome. But, but no, not all at once, yeah? One by one, please, because, because of the Zoom, we can't hear you. <laughs> one at a time, please. Okay, if there are no questions, then... Uh... Okay, I want to I wanna say a couple, a couple of things. I know that this was, um, maybe some of you were expecting something super gay and over the top, and I wish I could deliver that. I am wearing currently this kind of, okay, first of all, I've been having all these internet issues. And I'm also wearing this kind of academic teacher hat. Um, I used to do drag uh, in my early years. And um, drag is basically, in a, in a way, uh, wearing another identity. I think this is what many of these people are trying to do when we do that. When we take this kind of language, we allow ourselves to break some languages, to break some barriers through language. Uh, when I explain about these things, I feel it comes out very academic and I wish I could just go, we say Al Hanesh. Yes, we talk about Al Hanesh would be to go on the femme, I guess. Um, on the femme, as opposed to Al Gavro. Uh, on the mask, I suppose. Um, So uh, currently, I, I wish I could have more Alanesh for you. Uh, uh, but this is kind of what comes out. Uh, maybe I'll manage to give a couple of uh, examples right in the end because it's mostly not so much of vocabulary or history and it's more like a vibe of being, I suppose. But I see also there's a question. Uh, yeah, Ziad. Yeah, uh, also, Olan, hello. My name is Ziad. Yeah. And I'm from Egypt, and I want to ask a question regarding your, your presentation. First, thank you for the presentation. And second, you mentioned that you have just mentioned that you are in Greece right now. And I want to, like, maybe you can tell us some highlights between the LGBTQ community in Israel, the differences between the LGBTQ community in Israel and in Greece. And maybe, I don't know how long you have been living in Greece right now, but, uh, like, what are the most, most highlights in between the two countries 
regarding the LGBTQ community. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, a bit of topic, but interesting. Um, okay, LGBTQ in Greece. Um, I guess, okay, I, uh, Greece is a very, okay, it has a lot of similarities to Israel in the sense that it is very conservative, but also very progressive. Um, so while people are conservative, uh, all the laws are very progressive. So freedoms uh, legally are there, uh, but I think most people don't have as much freedom as they would in terms of how they conduct themselves uh, in, um, on the street with their families, I suppose, if this is uh, answering your question. Uh, so you mean that uh, the LGBTQ in Greece, it's not more advanced in regards like this conservative, it's more conservative than Israel, you mean? Or if one can't feel so, so free like in Israel? Uh, I, I don't know about Israel, but Tel Aviv is definitely way, 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 way light years <laughs> ahead. Uh, when compared to Athens, and as in every other country, the further you go from the metropolitan centers, the further you go from uh, liberties and freedom. So if you can think of Tel Aviv as the forefront and Jerusalem or, I don't know, Dimona as the... Uh, no, Israel is, is, is in that sense much better, but then again, uh, legally, they have uh, more rights than... Uh, legislation is in Israel is behind, and I think this is mostly because of European standards, but I am not that well versed in that sense. Okay, thank you for answering. Sure. Uh, okay, any other questions? I want to, uh, okay, and if there's no other questions, I, I, what I was going to say before is that um, Learing, super important. And one last thing that I want to do with you uh, for Gay Pride is a super important um, call for battle, I guess, um, which would be the super important term, Och Tarini. Och Achoti, my sister, Tarini. Lift it up, make it higher. Do it better, be happy. This is what you scream when you're on drugs in a club. This is what you scream when Dana International wins the Eurovision. This is what you scream when you're just happy at home, listening to music, having fun, walking in pride. Uh, it is very important. I want you all to go Och Tarimi back at home. Och Tarimi, but it is very important to do it the och way, which means I want a little bit of nasal to put into it, some nasal tones and a little and very high pitch. So listen to me and repeat. Och tarimi. Yes, please. Unmute everybody. Nasality. High pitch, guttural. Ah! Tarimi! There you go. Fantastic. Fantastic workshop. <laughs> what? It was a great, uh, great part, uh, the, this workshop. <laughs> Eladit, Todaraba. תודה רבה נשמה. ירונה. את יכולה לקרוא לי ירונה. אז תודה רבה לך. את יכולה לקרוא לי מתי שאת רוצה, מאמי. טוב נשמה, אין לי עוד סלנג, איזה וויד יפה יש לך. סחטיין על השיעור, סחטיין על המושקופאז', אם זה עובד. בטח, מושקופאז', מושקופאז'. ולילה טוב, ותיזהרי על הנש. ולילה טוב לכולם ולכולן, ותודה שבאתם, ולהתראות בפעם הבאה. גאווה שמחה, חברות.
תודות, תודות רבות אלעדות, ביי. תודה שבוע. ביי, תודה, תודה. אאוש. תודה. אאוש. אאוש. אאוש.